Hello, fellow translators, and greetings from Taiwan. Although you can't see anything outside, so you have to take my word for it that it's Taiwan. It could be anywhere. It could be greetings from Bolivia, from Belgium, from Botswana. All bees. Anyway, I know I'm in Taiwan, and uh, I um, and I just want to talk to you about this. How to be a successful freelance translator. The book is coming out February 11th. Um, well, the ebook actually both are, are going to be available February 11th. I do recommend the ebook, but even for the, like in the past, I've always recommended ebooks. But I noticed about half the people get the physical book anyway, so I, I did want to make sure that the physical book uh, worked. So I ordered this proof, and in fact, there are quite a few things that needed to be worked on here. Also, the margins I don't like them at all. So what's going to happen is we're, I'm going to tighten the margins. It's going to be the same as this, but it's going to be like 270 pages in the end. So it's going to seem very long, which I don't like either. But, um, but I mean, it should work out. Also because, so the way I have it divided is I have all these here. I'll, I'll show you the chapter headings. Uh, these are all the chapters. Here are the main chapter headings. Because it'll, um, it'll make it easier to go through. Like if you look here... You know, these are all the chapters, and then I show which chapter you're on right now, getting rid of this blank space. That's why I bookmarked it there, because, you know, I'm going through all the mistakes, like the blank spaces, which are there for some reason. But yeah, so they all have this. And so as you go through, it shows you which chapter you're on. And then there's a page that, you know, it uh, shows you some, you know, describing some approaches you can take and why in terms of starting strategy. And then uh, it, it uh, kind of describes what it's all about. So here, finding clients, discussing who your clients are and uh, where and how to find them. You know, it, I try to make it very clear, as clear as possible. And the thing is, you'll notice once you get to here, then you have marketing and then you have, I have this section called good problems. You have one assignment, now what? And here you're about halfway through. And then I say here, Refer to this section. What, sorry, I'm reading it backwards because it's on the screen. Refer to this section once you've been hired for your first job. So that's the thing. It'll seem like a thick book, and even if you get the ebook version, it'll seem like it's a lot of pages. But the first half is basically all you need before you get hired for a job. You know, so this is all you need when you are preparing, when you are building up, when you're trying to. And then once you get hired for a job, then you can start referring to the other parts because I have, you know, the section on getting paid. And then I have, um, you know, what to do once you got the assignment, then how to get paid and all the issues with getting paid. You know, there's, it, you don't need to read that before you actually have a job. So that's why I left it until later. And then, uh, and then I have other tips and tricks to keep, some, keep in mind. And then I have, um, uh, which you can refer to anytime you want, I guess. And then I have the next steps. The next steps here are stuff, you know, once you have your translation business going, if you want to build it up in various ways and things you can do with it, you know, once you actually start earning money, which can be interesting. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it. And, uh, you know, that's what you can expect from this book. As usual, I have it all. So, you know, what I do is I have this section, you know, before getting started. And what I did, I did it better in the final version. But you can see here, uh, I have pregame section, one day maximum, uh, or half a day maximum if you already have a resume. I try to show how long uh, each section will take so that uh, you get an idea and you can and you can schedule accordingly. My idea with this book is not that you read it through, be like, oh, that's interesting and that's it, but no, that you, it's actionable and you can use it right away as you're reading it. And that's what I wanna do with this book. I basically wanna make it as simple as possible for you to become a successful freelance translator. Uh, not as easy as possible because it's not going to be, I mean, I want to make it as easy as possible, but it's not going to be necessarily easy, but you know, simple. So you follow the necessary steps, don't overcomplicate it. And, uh, you know, and then you can, uh, you can achieve it. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's going to be available in physical and ebook format. It's available now for pre-order the ebook and, uh, for $1.99 or equivalent in, uh, in, uh, whatever currency you use. And, um, and then on February 11th, is when it'll be available, uh, but by that point, the price will go up. I'm not sure exactly also because Kindle kind of does its own thing, but I think it'll be around like $11.99, and I think both for the physical and the ebook. Um, but anyway, we'll see what happens. So, uh, but yeah, um, so if you do want to get it, I recommend getting it, and I've mentioned this in the other video, I recommend getting it during the pre-order. It's $1.99, and so you're not going to find a better deal. Um, and, and I think I mentioned the other video, 
I need to check back exactly what I mentioned because I know they limit the coupons, but basically that if you leave a review on Amazon um, after you get it, then uh, then I, I will offer access to uh, my course for free to any one of my courses. Um, and I have a limit to that. I'll have to refer to the other video to see what the limit is. I think the limit's five. Also because Udemy doesn't, you know, they're being stingy with their coupons. Uh, and so you can't, you can't control too much of it. But anyway, uh, I should be able to swing five courses. And then, yeah, anyway, that's pretty much it. I, I, w I want to go through a, kind of a sample, but I think that'll take too long. Um, but uh, here, what I can do is kind of go through each section a little bit and, and talk about it. So here, before getting started, this is where we discuss all the preparation you will need to start working in freelance translation. So, um, and what does this mean? This means that here we're gonna talk about what you need for you know your resume, your list of services, your profile page, uh, things like you know how to build up your profile page on pros.com or wherever you use it in your specialties, uh, about your user picture, where I have some embarrassing user pictures of mine. Um, I have a couple words on SEO, and uh, and blah 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 and I do mention also getting paid because you need to keep that in mind already from the beginning but just I just put like the bare minimum that you need ahead of time because then it's this whole separate chapter later on um, and then uh, yeah and then I talk about you know various different types of accounts like here I have Upwork as well and I talk about other websites to use that you can find and how to how you can find different websites because they can change depending on your country and your specialty and all that and uh and yeah but for the main ones like pros.com i go through some detail anyway blah 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 uh let's go through here then i have this section called let's take a step back with some theory an explanation as to what is going on around you and what you'll probably come across and i kind of i actually took quite a bit out of this book because i wanted to have the bare bones minimum but i did need some theory because you you need to know what's going on and many times you'll be hit with some terms or some issues and you won't understand it if you're first starting out and so I kind of wanted to go through and so I talk a little bit about the difference between translation agencies and end clients whether translation agencies are your clients or if they're if you know they're working for an end client is an end client your client or is a translation agency your client and you know these are things you kind of have to keep in mind you also have different types of clients you have individuals who will want different things uh, and then, uh, and then I mentioned a couple things about like, people will ask you also about interpreting and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, just stuff to keep in mind so you can handle them as they go. It's not that long. And then, then you have the starting strategy describing some approaches you can take and why. And so, yeah, here I talk about, uh, so what do I have? Uh, some legality issues just to get them out of the way. Um, you know, for when you're starting and when you're setting up, just make sure everything's correct um yeah and then you know then i discuss like pricing so what's pricing how does pricing work um and then i talk about uh, stuff like word count and how to calculate that how to charge should you charge per word should you charge per hour should you charge per you know anything else uh i have other sections creating an estimate and blah 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 anyway whatever then i have and in fact and then i go through because this is a complaint i got i, I have that's all great but what should i charge because you know, people are like, okay, you talk about all this theory, but what should I charge? And so, and so I address that as well. Then we have finding clients. And here I discuss who your clients are uh, and uh, where and how to find them. And so this is basically what is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, finding clients, uh, where to find uh, possible clients for the agencies, how to contact the agencies. Um, and do you want to find clients or do you want to find the jobs and the difference between those? And then I have sample introductions that you can give uh, when you do get in touch with them and uh, then personalized bios of a specific job. Then the strategy that I use uh, because, you know, just to share like what I've used out of the various different options. Then, then I have the section on finding end clients as opposed to agencies and what's different there and how to go about that. Um, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, some places to find them. Then we get into marketing, which is a bit different from finding clients. Finding clients is just you know, where are they? Marketing is, is here, how to promote and sell uh, your translation services, both online and off. And so this, I have it divided. Um, I've, I know I've mentioned this before, but what I have uh, basically is uh, first a section on marketing as a freelancer, which is very different from marketing yourself for a standard employment job. Then I have a section called active marketing, which is marketing as you think of it, which is normal marketing that you, you know, keep doing marketing yourself. Passive marketing, which is more of a set it and forget it type thing where you can set some things and then they kind of do the marketing for you over time and you don't need to worry about it anymore 
and they kind of work for you. And uh, so those are interesting. And uh, yeah, and then I just go through some tactics there. Then as I mentioned, I have the thing where once you want an assignment, I say refer to this section once you've been hired for your first job. And I have certain things there. I say create a checklist of certain of whatever you need and how to track your jobs, dealing with translation challenges, like you know if you have challenges with the actual translation job itself. Um, dealing with mistakes in the source text, uh, other factors to keep in mind, blah, 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 blah. Then I have getting paid, which is very important and very often gets neglected in all this hoopla. How to ensure you're paid, how to ask for money, how to accept payment, blah, blah, blah. And okay, so we go throughout this, invoices, how to look for red flags, password protect, to show you how, you know, a sample of my invoice and how I make it. And then uh, some fun you can have with invoices, how to collect money, how not to get screwed over by a client. Um, and I have and have an example where I got, you know, screwed over by a client, and uh, and I show you all the correspondence there, just so you can see what went wrong there. Um, and uh, blah blah blah. Some examples of excuses, referrals, and ratings, and stuff like that. There we go. And then here, other tips and tricks to keep in mind. Here I just put all the stuff that I didn't want to take out because it is very useful, but it didn't fall under you know under that progression because I have it under chronological progression, and it didn't fall under that. So these other tricks to, and tips and tricks to keep in mind is other stuff, other issues you may come across and uh, ways to get ahead in this business. So the first one is OCR, which I think is actually quite important and you'll probably come across it. But uh, I have a section on op optical character recognition, OCR. A thing on time management, because when you're an entrepreneur, where you're a freelancer, it's very different from when you have a standard job. So this is for people who are transitioning and maybe first becoming freelancers, entrepreneurs. I uh, just have a thing on my tidbits about time management. Uh, shares, commissions, rush jobs, these are things you'll come across as a translator and so I address them here. Um, and the other things that I recommend and talk about, I talk about cat tools, I talk about uh, various computer programs you can use to help you out or that I use that help me out. Um, I have a, you know, quite a bit on cat tools because they matter quite a bit. Glossary, translation tips for and computer backup and translators where it says editors, setting your own schedule. So you see it's a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of stuff uh, that you need uh, when you're a translator and when you're a freelance translator especially. And so I do think they're quite important. You'll find all those under tips and tricks. Um, so let's keep going. Certified translation, certified translator, I have that as well. Then you have the next steps. Some other steps to take if you want to see how much you can grow. So this is once for once you're earning money, once you have clients and uh, you, you're doing jobs and things are kind of going okay, maybe they're going quite well, and you want to see what else you can do, how you can grow, and where you can take this business. And there are various strategies to do that. Obviously, you don't you don't need to refer to this at all at the beginning. It's, it's useless. So you you really only need this first part, this first half at the beginning. And all the rest you can refer to later on. And this you don't refer to until your business is kind of going. And then I talk about certain things. I talk about incorporation, which I mentioned before in the legalities, but I talk about it here a bit more. Um, and then, uh, you know, naming your company, 80-20 analysis, which is something important when things start going and uh, to see what you want to do, delegating and how to go about that if you want to do that. And um, project management, are you making money? Do I create contracts, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, then that's it. Then I have a whole list of useful links that you can use, a couple pages of them, in fact. And then uh, I have a, my own glossary of terms in case you're not sure what ATA stands for or FIGS, FIGS languages or French, Italian, German, Spanish, you'll come across it. Then I have a freelance translation manifesto, which I think I've mentioned before in, in the, I made a video of it, if I posted it already, because that the freelance translation manifesto got delayed. So anyway, uh, I think I've posted it already. It's something that I wrote up and you can find the article on Medium. Um, and I, and I, I wrote it up here too because because uh, I wanted to. And uh, then I talk about, uh, yeah, that I offer a course on how to set up a translation agency if you're interested in, and I offer help with anything else, blah, 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 um, about the author. And that is all. So there you go. How to be a successful freelance translator. It's all in there. I, I'm, I'm actually quite proud of this book because this is... Uh, you know, I've kind of gone through various iterations, and but I really went through this book.
from scratch once again for this and uh, you know wanted to make sure everything worked it was up to date it would that it made sense I felt like before it was kind of a hodgepodge and so that's why I divided it in a chronological sense and did all these things I really wanted to make it as easy as possible to follow along and to follow through with the book whether it's this version or the ebook version I actually like I said I recommend the ebook version um, but you can get either one and it'll be fine and uh, yeah, available February 11th, available for pre-order right now at the link that I'll probably put below in the description or if I forget in the comment or something like that. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And uh, otherwise, uh, don't forget to pre-order because it's only going to be this cheap during the pre-order time. And, uh, and it's cheaper than you know anything else you'll find. And so yeah, go for it. And I think that's all I have to say about this. I'm sure I'll think about something as soon as I turn off that video because that's what always happens. But never mind. I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Savedum.